I see countries are having different attitudes uh, toward uh, the inbound uh, Chinese tourists. So how do you see this uh, very different uh, approaches taken by economies? These are not barriers because uh, these are just tests uh, that will require additional steps uh, compared to the other countries that may not uh, require them at this moment. Overall, okay. it is still a positive uh, effect because the people-to-people -people exchange, people mobility within the region will continue particularly tourism and students. Of course, it's more complicated than just the, the policy itself. There's geopolitics, there's uh, uh, the general uh, shifting uh, situation of the world, uh, including uh, how people look at China. So at this moment, how do you see these factors also melt in as we speak? Well, uh, I think there's a lot of excitement and anticipation uh, about the opening up uh, in East Asia. Uh, especially in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, the sector that is most particularly excited about the prospects of opening up, and uh, as, as, as it happens at the moment, is the leisure, hospitality, and tourism sectors. And this uh, ripple effects, as you have uh, mentioned, is probably also going into geopolitical uh, uh, impact uh, because the region has been anticipating the return of uh, China, particularly on the world stage, uh, geopolitically during the G20 ASEAN summit as well as APEC summits. So probably this is the commercial side of uh, China's return to the world stage in complement uh, with the uh, political aspects.